One, two, one, two, three, four. Almost a weekend and you don't know what to do. Or you just need something fun to listen to. So, so fun. Yes, we're on the so air. So and the gang's all here, all things on the South Side. We're listening to the South Side Fun. Looking for the best South Side breweries. Or you might just need an awesome place to eat. Southside Pond! Greenwood Evergreen! Southside Blue Island Beverly, pay listen, all sub to You're tuned in to the Southside Pod. Southside Pod! Old Plum Midlothian! Southside Pod! Old Fort Chicago Ridge, Flossmore and Bridgeview. You're listening to Southside Pod! And belly on up to the nine foot homemade oak bar. Pour yourself a cold one. This is 30 minutes of good that is Southside Pod. Mike's got his guitar out. We've got three really good guests on the program today. Bill's sitting at the end of the bar with a bottle of vodka and pineapple juice because he's a weirdo who gets on a kick and then drinks the same drink, however weird it may be, for months and months on end. I'm not a big drinker, so like I go through like like bouts of like nothing. And then when I come back into it, like I try something new and then I stick with it. Like because you were doing for a while the seltzer drinks. Yeah, you I still really like, like those. those. I still enjoy those. Okay. Before that, light beer, of course. Uh, summertime is like pineapple. I eat pineapple. And like, you know, I was like, hey, why don't I try pineapple and vodka? Why not try so this? this is like your thing now. You come walking in with a, a jug of uh, pineapple and a bottle of vodka. I don't know if it's a thing forever, but it's a thing that I... You came in, though, basically told all of us this is what you're doing these days. Right. This is For your now. drink. Right. So you get on one thing, you just stick with it is what you do. For doing. a little bit, sure. What's not... a little bit? A month? Yeah, Two months? A couple months. Probably couple the summer. Months. This will be my summer this is drink. This summer drink. Yeah. Somebody offers you something else, you're like, nope, I need pineapple juice and vodka now. Well, right. Remember when it was Red Bull and vodka? Yeah. This that is better. Like this while. is a lot better, right? Yeah. Now it, now he's gotten older and his heart would explode. Yeah. That's right. why he's doing right. Red Bull and vodka. We'll splash a splash of grenadine in more downer, yes. How do you select that all of a sudden? That's what's curious to me. Because I know that- No, I know started that, off on a vacation in, the, in, the, like the, in uh, Punta Cana. Okay. So that, that makes okay, sense. Okay, that makes Tropical sense. Drinks, Tropical drinks. Right. You tried some. Because I know how Mike and I probably pick beers is- Either seasonal, yeah, or there's something that like we've heard about. We try it, we get on a kick. There's a drink called the, uh, I think it's called the Madras, and okay. it's a pineapple vodka with a splash of crayon. Okay, and that's what I was drinking. Splash of crayon, Crank, yes, whatever, whatever you want, periwinkle, <laughs> burnt sienna, whatever flavor they are. They have 64 different ones, so you <laughs> that's have a, it's a cool. long night. It's a long night, and at the end, you can just keep the sharpener. A pitcher of beer, a pitcher of beer, let's order. Hailstorm Brewing here on Southside Pod is hopping, and uh, I have Chris Schiller here. He is the owner. How you doing, bud? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Good. What are you drinking? I am drinking a uh, big, beautiful wheat right now. You know, my wife had a couple of those. She loved it. I tried it. The thing that I got out of it was that it, it feels like I'm having something really traditional. Like, I've tried Bavarian-style Hefeweizens, and, and, but they're, they don't always feel like the same. This one feels like... I could have gotten this in Germany. Thank you. Appreciate it. That's a real compliment. You know, and the reason is it's it's a little bit difficult to bring out the the banana clove esters out of the yeast. Uh, certain conditions have to be just right to really emphasize that. And so we've really tried to do that. Will is a master at, at brewing those types of things and, and getting that characteristic out of the yeast. And he's really done well on this. And it's much better than our previous batches. Yeah, I know. The first thing she said was every time I have a Hefeweizen, it tastes like there's too much banana. Like, it's almost like it's overdone. And yours was perfect. It was exactly what it should have been. And she, like, here's a person that I introduced to beer maybe about five years ago because she was a wine drinker. And she right away was like, wow, this is different from any of them that I ever get anywhere else. Yeah, so the yeast you use is called a Weinstefaner yeast, and that's from one of the oldest breweries in Germany. And you get two things. You get banana and you get clove. And all that depends on the fermentation temperature. So if you ferment, I forget which which it is, warmer or colder, but I think like warmer it's more banana, colder it's more clove. You have an interesting thing going on here on Thursday nights. I don't know how long it's been going on. If this is new or whatever, you got a guy doing bingo with with music, 
And supposedly, you have to identify the song to fill out your bingo card. How long have you been doing this for? It is actually a brand new thing. So if it goes well, we'd love to continue it. Uh, they do do it at a few other breweries that I've seen before. Noon Whistle, and I think Phase 3 does it. And it looked like a really cool thing. So it's like, hey, let's book this. We want to have fun things to do on Thursdays. We want to have a band on Friday, maybe a band usually on Saturday. We want to start having something to do really every like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, if we can. Our goal really is to make this an event space as much as a really good destination for beer, because really that's what it's all about right now. It's about having great experiences, having great things to do, not missing out on community, community events like this. So that's our focus right now is just more and more like weekend events, things for people to do, interactive, plus great beer on top of it and great food. You know, uh, your your bartender was telling me you got a pretty good crowd here, and I've heard from a lot of other breweries that the people are coming back now. Like people are showing up to drink beer in a beer hall or in a brewery, and they're they're they can see this notable rise in what's going on. And how? Tell me a little bit about well, like what it's like being in Tinley, being part of the community as you mentioned, and like you know how much it means to you to see people walking in here and drinking your beer even on a weekday. Yeah, it's a great community of craft beer lovers in Tinley Park and, and, the, and the greater surrounding area. Uh, I think the other factors, we do have a number of breweries right around here. So it is a bit of a destination. There's there's three right now. There's going to be four pretty soon. Right, Are the fourth coming? Yep. Who's coming? Well, you remember 350 Brewing. Yes, and then they went away, yeah. Yep, they're coming back as a different brewery. Not they, a different owner. Actually, the original owner, Eric... It has purchased everything and is reopening it as Flipside Brewing. And because it's it's the flip side of 350? Yes. <laughs> I love how people come up with names for things. It's a very good brewer, and it's going to be excellent beer, and he's working really hard right now. So, All right, before I let you go, we got to talk about, in my opinion, one of the great beers in Chicago. And I say that because I'm an IPA drinker. And I'm a traditional IPA drinker. I like to be able to see through my IPA. I'm not a hazy guy. I love the West Coast styles. I love a good IPA. I also know that they're bitter. I also know that sometimes they're really strong. You have this one called Dominatrix that is a triple IPA. It's 11%. It's got Citra and Centennial hops in it. And it may be the smoothest IPA I've ever drank. Like, it's almost dangerous because as I'm drinking it, I'm like, I could put down six of these and pass out in the backyard. It's like, this is insane, this beer. Where does this come from? Tell me a little bit about it. So it's one of our original uh, beer designs, and it's one of my uh, recipes from way back. But I, w- I want to say, you know, part of what we love to do is just take something regular and just make it nuts just for the hell of it. And, and we kind of did that. And we're like, nobody's doing this. Who's doing a triple? at this percentage, and unfortunately you have to put just a mountain of hops in it because you've gotta, you gotta combat that maltiness that you're building up. Right. So it's an expensive beer to brew, but with Citra, we've got that traditional like hop flavor that everybody loves. It just makes it pretty, I don't think it's still unique. I, I really have still have never seen other beers in Chicago like go that far with an IPA, it's it's not that common. So we're definitely gonna stick with it. It's it's just pretty fun to have and and I've I've I have a friend that drank a whole liter of it one time. Oh my god. And then said he was gonna go out drinking. <laughs> Hailstorm Brewing is located at 8060, 186th Street. That's right off of 80th Avenue in Tinley Park. Get out here. Big giant beer hall with the big giant tables that you would expect in like a a German beer hall. You can see them working on the beers while you're in there. Really cool bar and an amazing menu. Not only a beer, but great food. I see you've upgraded some things around here. I ate tonight. It was awesome. Chris Schiller, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being here and having us. We really appreciate it. A picture of beer. Following is a paid political advertisement. Hi, I'm Chris Butler. I'm a husband, a father, the pastor of a mid-sized family church, and a 25-year veteran of community organizing. I'm running for Congress because we need a Democrat with the willingness to challenge party leadership when they want to stop fighting for the resources our communities need. And we need a leader who will work across the aisle to get things done. 
These two characteristics are all that matter in this election. I grew up in the evangelical Christian church that I now pastor, and I've been doing social justice work since I was 12 years old. I worked to improve public school funding and to expand school choice, and I helped launch a national effort called the AND Campaign that has brought thousands of people together across ideological divides. I have the background and experience to challenge our party's leaders when we must and to work across the aisle where we can to get support and resources to our communities. So on June 28th, vote for Chris Butler. Not just another Democrat, a new kind of Democrat. For more information, visit electchrisbutler.com. Joining me on the phone line right now, uh, a friend of the show and also an excellent writer. Shows up on The Patch. If you don't know what The Patch is, you go to thepatch.com. You get local news for your area, your village, your town, right on the south side. Southside Pod actually shows up on The Patch as well. Lorraine Swanson is on the line. How are you, Lorraine? I'm very good. It's uh, glad to see the the it not be as hot as it has been. I don't know. I was baking today. I, I, I'm i trying to cut down on my gas bill in the car so I won't even run the air conditioner when I'm driving yeah. around. I'm making my teenagers miserable. And and that might be, I don't know if that's a big issue when, you, when you're trying to make your, your vote here in the Illinois primaries coming up, and that is very soon. Tell me a little bit about what day is voting, and uh, what is this? This is a primary, correct? Yes, it is our gubernatorial primary, and June 28th, that's next week so we're down to the wire that's tuesday and early voting is going on now if you changed your address or for whatever reason you're not registered or you need to update your registration you can register to vote at your poll at, at your early voting site um, you can register to vote on the day of the primary but you have to do that in your home precinct so you go to the Cook County uh, clerk's website, Karen Yarbrough. She has a, a link where you can just see who's on your ballot for the primary. One of the big contests is the congressional sixth race. Yeah. Because the, the U.S. congressional lines got redrawn. And I actually used to be in the first now I'm in the 6th, where I'm at in Evergreen Park, part of Evergreen Park, a small section still in the 1st, but most of it moved over to being part of the 6th Congressional District. A lot of people are in a different area, and what happened is you had two incumbents, both from the Democratic Party, that are now sitting in the same district and have to run against each other in a primary. Am, am I wrong about that? Tell me a little bit about what's going on in that race, because those two have to go head-to-head -head on Tuesday. Yes, that, uh, it's a member-on-member -member race. Um, we have Sean Caston, who was part of the, uh, the 6th District. And then we have Marie Newman, who is still technically at the, uh, the 3rd Illinois Congressional District, which covered a big swath of the uh, south suburbs, Cook, Will, a little piece of DuPage, from like midway to uh, the Beverly Mount Greenwood area in part of the South side. She has retained a majority of her old Illinois third district. Uh, Caston has about 21% of his. They are very similar in their views. Uh, Newman uh, is probably a little more progressive. It's, been a little contentious until last week when tragically Sean Caston announced that his 17 year old daughter just passed away. There isn't a cause, but he said she died overnight in her sleep. So they've kind of less of the comparative ad bashing. The big elephant in the room, as you know or may not know, was that Newman. It currently has, is undergoing an ethics probe in the House. You know, I noticed that they've kind of taken the gloves off. And, you know, at the end of the day, what's more important, your family or an election? Yeah, you know, that's a really that's really sad news to hear that one of the candidates lost a 17-year-old daughter. Yeah. I, I have a 16-year-old daughter. I can't even imagine 
what that would yeah. be like. And uh, right then and there, I would think that all the rules kind of change a little bit as they get close. They're only a few days away from the primary, and then this whole thing is over. One moves on, one of them goes home. If you had to make a prediction right now, is it clearly the candidate that has the majority of their original district? Is that is it like a foregone conclusion? Who do you think wins this one? Well, I I couldn't say, Chris. <laughs> I'm bad at making predictions. I made predictions uh, two years ago, and none of them came to pass. So, Well, good. Give me a prediction, Lorraine, and then we know it's the other one. I think it's close. I think uh, Caston has a lot of, lot more money than uh, Newman. Newman doesn't take any corporate money, and so she's just, you know, relying on a kind of a grassroots campaign. Uh, if I were to hazard a guess, just have to go with Newman, but I think it could be close. Based upon your prior record of predictions, uh, Kasten sounds like uh, that's that's the victor. And then uh, then the the winner goes on to the general election, and they're probably running into the mayor of Orland Park, right? Is that what you think? Well, I think it's going to be between Pico, the mayor of Orland Park, against Grasso, who. Uh, was mayor of Burr Ridge. But can a Republican beat a Democrat in 2022? I think it's going to be interesting. Lorraine Swanson writes for The Patch. You can check out all The Patch's coverage of uh, that race and any other political races going on over the next week here. Uh, Should be an interesting day and uh, curious about the results. And then I I would imagine we're going to have some very interesting races going into the the general election in the fall. Lorraine, thanks so much for jumping on Southside Pod. Thank you, Chris. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. It's the middle of the show song. 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 Chris had nothing to put here, so he put this song. It's the middle of the show song. Everybody listening to Southside Pod is looking for something. You may be looking for some medical equipment. When I say medical equipment, you're like, no, no, I don't I don't need that. Well, CPAP machine, it's medical equipment. Uh, you, you need some oxygen tanks for you or somebody that needs oxygen. You want to pick up an extra tank. It doesn't need to be as inconvenient to pick up things to take care of a loved one, to keep them independent in their home, to keep yourself independent and in your home. Ramps that go up into the house, you need to retrofit the bathtub. Diabetes management, they've got everything at Hyatt Home Medical Equipment. And they work with your insurance. They make it very easy to get the equipment right here locally. There's a perk to that. You have a question, Hyatt Home Medical Equipment is right here. If you mention Southside Pod, you're also getting a deep discount. So why not check them out at hhme.com or stop in today at 3518 West 95th Street to Hyatt Home Medical Equipment. So I want to pull back the curtain just a little bit here at Southside Pod. Some of you have been listening for a long time. Some of you have just started. And if you just started, don't worry. Every episode we've ever done is still available Anywhere podcasts can be found and always at southsidepod.com on demand. They're all 30 minutes of good and they're all still relevant. I mean, there's like two minutes on every episode where we talk about something that's coming up that weekend, but it's still 28 minutes of relevant good and then two minutes of something that's already in the past that you can't go back and get again. You'll have a little bit of regret for missing out and then the rest of the show is still right there. Good as new. Bill comes down here with Mike. Mike brings his guitar. Sometimes Mike plays it, sometimes he doesn't. But before they come over, Bill is constantly texting Mike and telling him songs that he wants Mike to learn. Some of these are impossible, as Mike is an average to fair guitar player. Maybe. But then after they decide they want to play it, they also want to make it relevant to the show. So you're sitting down here right now, and you're going to ask me a question. And it's going to be a stupid question, but it's going to lead to a song that you've wanted to sing all week. So just just ask your question. Come on. Hey, Chris, have you ever been to Asheville, North Carolina? No. How far away is that? It's exactly 500 miles away from here. (laughs) Like on the dot. Can you believe that? Wow. So random and amazing. When I wake up, well, I know I'm going to be. I'm going to be the man who wakes up next to you. When I go... Yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who goes along with you. And when I get drunk, when I get drunk, well, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who gets drunk next to you. 
And when I have a heaven, yeah, I know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be the man who's havering to you. I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more just to be the man who walks a thousand miles to fall down at your door. Yeah, Asheville, North Carolina. How far if away you is get it? in your car and you leave Evergreen Park, Illinois. Right now. And you travel 500 miles. I like would just, be. And you stop. Well, you got to take certain roads, obviously. I mean, at some point, you might end up in different areas. I would have to use some sort of a map. Correct. But if you typed into Google Maps, right. Asheville, North Carolina, you, you, would be, and you left Evergreen, the heart. Where is the heart of Evergreen Park, Illinois? 95th right? and Kedzie. 95th and Kedzie. Right in the center. Left, like, if you just left, you know, the, the parking lot of Chai Tung. Right. Like, you're like... Wow, I just had a great uh, egg drop soup. I want to drive to North Carolina. As I often do. Right. You would end up in Asheville, North Carolina. 500 miles away. 500. And if you drove back, you know what that is? Another That's 500 a thousand miles. miles. <laughs> a thousand miles. It's double. All you got to do is just double it. But you have to go That's back. It. I get it now. You'd have to end your trip at Chai Tung. Right. Hopefully I, they're I, open. You gotta time it too. I don't know what the Well, there's an overweiss at that corner too. That's I get true. ice cream. Right. You could start right. it with egg drop soup, right. end it with a milkshake. Exactly. Right in the middle, Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> it's a good trip. You gonna sing now? And I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 more Just to be the man who walked a thousand miles to fall down at your door You know, that totally fit the flow of the show. It is now time for your Southside Pod Bulletin Board, brought to you proudly by Cool Clouds Vapor Shop. Quitting smoking is hard, and Cool Clouds wants to help you with an alternative. They also have great CBD products available, a knowledgeable staff, and they've been around forever. They know what they're doing in there. Check them out online at coolcloudsvapor.com or stop in and say hi, 3837 West 95th Street in Evergreen Park. Friday night in Oak Lawn, the village is putting on their movies in the park, and Encanto is on there at 8.15 p.m. They're putting it right up on the big, giant blow-up screen. Bring your blanket, your lawn chair, your popcorn. It is a movie night under the stars at the Village Green, 9446 South Raymond Avenue. Oak Lawn is rocking all weekend long. Saturday, 2 p.m. until 4.30 in the afternoon, the Beatles tribute band American English is putting on a concert at the Oak Lawn Public Library. I've seen these guys before. I actually got to announce them on stage at another event about a year or so ago. They are very good. 9427 Raymond Avenue that Saturday afternoon at the Oak Lawn Public Library. Get more details at OLPL.org. You've heard me talk about Sid Sauce. It's delicious. They've been on the show before. It's the only place I get my hot sauces from. So many different ones to choose from. They offer free delivery door to door. Hot sauce is good for the immune system. It contains beta carotene, antioxidants, and it also speeds up your metabolism. It makes food hot, more delicious. Put it on everything. Check out Sid Sauce on Facebook. It's the best way to reach out, see what they have to offer, and order. And don't forget, if you want to head out to Orland Hills, the Village of Orland Hills party in the park happening all weekend long at Kelly Park at 167th and Haven Avenue. There's even fireworks on Saturday night. 
For each and every one of us, life is changing, and most of the time those changes are exciting to embrace. We celebrate milestones in our life, but at some point you might need some help around the house. Hibernian Home Care Service wants to help you. If you are a loved one recovering at home from an illness or hospitalization, suffering from dementia, living with a chronic health condition, terminally ill, or just a fall risk, learn more at hibernianhomecareservice.com or call Mary Murphy, 708 634 2450. Joining me on the phone line right now, a good friend of the show who's been on several times and he's brought his own friend along because they're going to talk about everything going on currently in the village of Lamont. And from what I understand, Jason Barry, uh, there's also massive fireworks that shoot off coming up uh, here on the 4th of July weekend. And Lauren Responte is on the line as well. And Lauren, welcome on to the show. Are the Lamont fireworks the best around? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I'm telling you that they're the best in the Chicago land area, Chris. Really? That's a bold statement. Yes, absolutely. 22 minutes of an amazing show in the sky. You can't miss it. You see, here's the thing. I don't know if you guys have ever done this before, but I, I've gone to like a 3rd of July or 4th of July ball game at the rate or before that the cell or before that Comiskey Park. And when you're when you're walking out of the ballpark down the ramp, you can look over all of Chicagoland and see all of these fireworks that are going off and you can actually see the shows like there's a show way over here and there's a show way over there. If you get a, a chance in a good vantage point, you can see all these going off at the same time. They all look pretty big, but you're telling me if I look off in the direction of Lamont, that's the best one. I'm telling you it's the best one. I've been here for 10 years and I still have, I have uh, yet to find one that's a little bit better. So what makes it good? Is it timed up to music? Is it, is it bigger than everybody else's? What, what makes it really good? Yeah. So it's timed with the music really well. Like I said, it's a 22 minute long show. That's a very long fireworks show. Normally you're getting anywhere from like eight to 12 minutes for a regular fireworks show. Again, ours is 22. Um, also it is, you can get premier seats right in front. You can see the fireworks being launched off the ground in a safe distance, of course. But you can see them getting launched off the ground. You can get front row right there. And we're right off of uh, 365 and 127th Street. So if you're driving down the highway that day, you can even see the fireworks while you're driving. So you can't miss it from any angle. It, it is just the best show around. It's all colors, all the music. It's it's a great environment. Um, it's a fun. It's a great event too. So when is this one? When is the Lamont show? So this is going to be on uh, Sunday, July 3rd. The event begins at 4 p.m. We have kids entertainment we have amusement rides we have um food vendors beer all that great stuff live music a dj um that's all of it at four o'clock and then the fireworks shoot off at about nine fifteen when it starts off and um all of it's free to attend with the exception of purchasing beer and food awesome i i anytime i go to lamont there's always beer and food available at all their events i always find that to be <laughs> it gives me comfort to know that when i go to a lamont event there's beer and food there it's not always the case when you go to different things you know, sometimes it's BYOB. You guys, you guys do it up right out there. Jason, are there any parades or events or anything else going on in the uh, in the village uh, leading up to or over that weekend? Oh yeah, so we are all in on summer right now. We're calling it our signature summer. It's our chance to celebrate all the great annual events, especially in Lamont downtown. So, you know, our week starts on a Wednesday night with the Lamont Legends Cruise Night. That's from the Business Alliance. Uh, that runs all summer through August. Uh, Sunset's War a concert series downtown on Thursday nights from the Park District. Chalk It Up Art Event July 9. We have Market on the Terrace happening this Friday from Mabel's Market. Later in July, the Giving Back to Lamont concert July 16th. There is a food truck fest on July 2 at the Forge. I'm going all over the place. There's just too much happening. I noticed as well uh, this Saturday, the Forge is doing two hype crew with old school 80s and 90s hip hop. The Forge is just such a great place, and they've got that big giant stage there. That's a, that's an outdoor show in the summer, and that's that's a big area if I remember right. Correct? Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I saw on the on the on the promotion for it that there's going to be uh, Fly Girls, so I thought maybe you <laughs> might find a Mid South Side pod out there. <laughs> The fly Never girls. Know. Listen, I, I know that Lauren's answer is the fireworks, so I'm not going to allow her to give this as an answer. <laughs> so fireworks excluded, Lauren and Jason, can each one of you uh, give me your favorite event other than fireworks, Lauren, that uh, that happens in Lamont during the summer that you're still looking forward to that's coming up? Is there something that you're like, I'm making sure I get to that? Well, I'll probably pick the same one Lauren's going to pick, right? Is it a Thursday night? Downtown. It's a Thursday night, downtown Street. Lamont, 7 p.m. We've got five this summer, our sunset soirees. Tell me a little bit more about what this is. 
Yeah, so on uh, Thursday night, uh, downtown Lamont, Stephen Street, uh, we close off the road. We close off Canal Street and Stephen Street, and we put a band at the end of the road. We have some beer, some food vendors. Um, you can bring your own, but we strongly encourage that you buy local, and you can bring your chairs, your blankets, your friends, most importantly, and set up in the middle of the street for three hours for a free concert. And uh, it's a fantastic time. Yeah, every week we're looking at about just over uh, 1,500, almost 2,000 people in the street. Plenty of room to sit. Um, plenty of room to set up and get your whole, you know, Ravinia style event kind of going on. Um, and again, we do it uh, five different dates this summer, and we're looking at uh, June 23rd, and we got July 14, July 21, and July 28th today as the people listen to this, right? Yeah, it's incredible to me that you guys are blocking off a street five times this summer on a Thursday night to put a band out there for food and drink and party. Lamont is like that island that Pinocchio goes to. It's a nonstop party. <laughs> It's great. And, you know, the, the downtown businesses, especially our restaurants and taverns, love it. So we have a special relationship with all of them, as you know, Chris. And so, you know, if, if you're not BYOB, like Lauren said, you could walk into Huey's. You could walk into 111, Cornerstone, uh, Tom's. You could uh, get uh, some of the vendors. Diggs, gels are out there. So you could go in there, grab a drink, grab a bite to eat, and bring it back to your seat, sit down, you know, People yep. start putting out their uh, their lawn chairs and all the rest. Um, the kids are dancing in front. It's a really special event. It's and of course you can't come to Lamont without having Pollyanna. So they're always pouring on site too at these events. So um, it's a great way to obviously support local, but get that big brand name that everybody's been talking about. So oh yeah, I know all about the Pollyanna. We get to the Pollyanna every oh, yeah. <laughs> every couple of months. Southside Pods over at Pollyanna. I got to actually taste the first bourbon to come out of the barrels. Uh, for their brand new distillery when they were trying it out. Jason, a radar went off around Jason, and he was like, wait a minute, somebody's opening up a bourbon barrel. And next thing you know, he was standing next to me at Pollyanna, unannounced. It was amazing. I was, I was, I was. <laughs> you know, one, one event that's coming up, bourbon reminds me of cocktails, reminds me of Friday uh, Market on the Terrace. This is a new event for Mabel's Market, and it's this Friday, um, the 24th, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., She's going to have a jazz duo out there. There'll be uh, local artists and makers and wooden paddle. Really nice spot in downtown is coming over uh, serving up cocktails. So it'll be a really uh, classy event there again this Friday. So check that out. That could become a, a regular thing in downtown that we look forward to. I really appreciate you both jumping on the show and, and telling me about everything that's going on. I feel like you could probably fill up 45 minutes of a half hour Southside pod with everything going on in Lamont in just the next three or four weeks. So folks, remember, if you want to see any of this, they got a big calendar up, all their different events. Uh, you can eat, dine, drink, and explore at lamontdowntown.com. And thanks so much to the both of you for jumping on and talking with us today. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you for listening to see what's happening. On the South Side Pod, on the South Side Pod, join us again and be sure to tell a friend about the South Side Pod, about the South Side Pod, all things about the neighborhood we live in, all things about the places that we go, it's the best side. Of Chicago, the South Side Pod. What are you Googling? How to play guitar? <laughs> so, you, so you decided to learn to play guitar. Step one. Take the guitar out of the case. <laughs> Many people prefer using a strap to hold the guitar up. Bing! It's like the old record. You gotta flip the book when it bings. <laughs> When you hear R2-D2 beep, beep turn the page. Oh, oh my God, those are the best. Those are the best. <laughs>